Wayne. We need a Van Wingerton to help this little Van Wingerton. Thank you. <laughs> hey, welcome to Vacation Bible School. We're glad you're here today. Good to see all of you. So well behaved and quiet and calm and wishing there was something exciting to do. Hi, Jen. Who do I see here? AJ, way to go, man. I see. Oh, we have four people that were not here yesterday, at least. Four, five. Is this your first time this week? Yeah, he wasn't here Sunday morning. Good. Well, I'm glad you're here as a first grader. I am not a first grader. Is that a surprise? No, they gave up on me and threw me out. Good. All right. Hey, we're going to uh, we're going to pray, and then we're going to sing. Okay. You know why we pray? We ask God to help us. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be great if nobody broke a leg tonight? Everybody got home safe last night. A lot of rain, a lot of wind. You can pray for the eucalyptus. Do you know the eucalyptus? That's him and uh, his wife. And they had damage in their house from hail and rain last night. So you could pray for them. They have leaks. And uh, pray for them. Yes. A big storm, but no big fish. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you didn't get swallowed. I have a new fish picture tonight. Anyway, let's pray. Father, our gracious, merciful, kind, long-suffering God, we don't deserve to know you. We don't deserve to be loved by you, but we sure revel in the fact that you love us. We ask for your blessing now. As we have the next couple hours just to study the Bible, have some fun, sing a bunch of neat songs, memorize your word, we pray for your blessing on our time. Bless each of these teachers who are working with the children and sitting with the children trying to help them. Give us great love, patience, long-suffering, compassion for these little ones, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Here comes Mrs. Estabrook. Did you know her name was Estabrook or Jennifer or Jen? Mrs. Jennifer, there you go. It works. <laughs> Hi, you guys look so good tonight. Look all cheerful and ready. Okay, so we're going to sing our simple offering song first. So tonight, let's stand up and sing it. And we'll sing it through once with the words, and then we'll just start it right over again with no words and see if we can sing it. Okay. <laughs> Our song, um, You'd Better Do It. And we're going to do the first verse. This is the one we've been doing the most. So we're going to sing the first verse through. And then we're going to put our hands over our eyes like this. And we're going to try to sing the first verse without looking. But the words will still be up there. 
And if you need to look, you can do this. And like find your word that you need and then don't look again, okay? But don't look as much as you can not look. But you can do it. First time you can look. Second time, don't look. Okay, here we go. God told Jonah to go down to Nineveh, not a wicked town, but Jonah didn't want to go where he was Okay, now Miss Janice is going to come and do your missionary story for tonight.
want to show you this picture first. So our missionary that we've learned about, Hudson Taylor, this is the country where he was going to go. Yes, Cooper. Okay. So this is where he was going to go to China. Okay, and then here's the other, you remember this map. Here is where we live, not where Hudson Taylor was from. Here is where he was from, from England, and here where he was going to go. And what we learned last night is it finally became time for Hudson Taylor to go to China. And this is where we stopped last night. Because when Hudson Taylor was on the ship, at one point, there was a big storm. Remember that? There was a big storm, but God blessed, and the ship did not break apart in the big storm. Like when we've learned about Jonah in the Bible, these sailors were afraid that the ship was going to be destroyed. But God protected the ship, so that was wonderful. But the next thing that happened, there were a bunch of jagged rocks and the ship was getting very close to the rocks. And so the sea captain was a Christian. And he said, I don't know what we're going to do because this time there's no wind. And the wind will not move the ship away from the rocks. I don't know. We've done everything we can think to do. I don't know what else to do. And Hudson said, there is one more thing we can do. That's where we stopped yesterday. But what he said to the captain, the thing we can do is pray because God is the one who's in control of the wind and the waves. And he said, we are four people on this ship who are Christians. Why don't we each go to our cabin and pray to the Lord and ask him to send the wind? And the captain said, let's do that. <clears throat> So the four men went to their cabins and prayed. And after Hudson had prayed, he went out and he talked <coughs> to, the, um, to the deck officer. This is the deck officer. And he said, let down the sail. The deck officer said, but there's no wind. And Hudson said, but let it down. I see a little bit of wind blowing at the top of the sail. The deck officer did not believe on the Lord Jesus, and he said, oh, that's just a cat's paw, which is a small little wind. But Hudson said, please, let the sail down. So the man did. The deck officer let it down, and do you know what? The Lord did send enough wind to blow that ship away from those ragged, uh, ragged rocks. So Hudson was praising the Lord. God delivered the ship, and he thought, God helped us on this ship uh, journey. He will help me in China. The ship journey took five months to get to China. That's a long time. It took five months. And then when he got to China, he landed near the town of Sh Shanghai. Do you know Brother Aaron and Mrs. Grace and their family? That's where they lived at one point, was in Shanghai. So they know all about it, or they, they know all about Shanghai. This is where Hudson Taylor uh, landed, was near that town. And he saw the people running around in their Chinese clothes and speaking their Chinese language. And Hudson was thinking, oh, I wish I could tell them about Jesus. Because here he saw all of these people walking around and doing their business that they had to do their work. And he's like buying their groceries or doing their things, even little children running around playing. And he thought, I wish I could tell them about Jesus. But he did not know the language. So he couldn't say anything about Jesus, but he did pray for them. And the first step he did, he got a room to stay in, a room with a missionary that let him stay there. And when he was there, they let him learn Chinese from a Chinese helper. And here, sorry, there it is. There was his Chinese helper who was a kind man. And these, of course, you've probably seen letters like that. These were Chinese letters. And, Ch and 
Hudson Taylor was trying to learn what these meant, and he was trying to learn to say them. And, but his tongue being, he was an Englishman, and this was another language. He, his tongue could not form those letters like someone who would actually learn it. And sometimes his mouth hurt from trying to say those words. Sometimes his head hurt because it was just so hard. But he kept at it. He kept working very, very hard. And eventually, he learned enough, uh, enough Chinese to speak simple language to the people. And he would tell them as much as he could about Jesus. And with hard work and time, he did learn to speak to them. And so finally, he was to the point where he went with another missionary or maybe a Chinese helper. And he went on a place, a thing like this. Let me show you this thing. This is called a houseboat. And so there's Hudson Taylor and a Chinese friend, and they would travel up the Yangtze River, which was a big river in China. They would travel up that river and go to the villages to try to tell people about Jesus. Some of the villages were right by the water, and so they could go in there and talk to the people about Jesus. And then some of the um, villages, once they got to where the houses were on the where the wall or the edge of the river was, the village was further in. If it was not far away, Hudson Taylor and his helper would walk to the village and tell them about Jesus. But sometimes the towns were further away. So what they used was like a little type of a wheelbarrow because it would be a long way away. Like for instance, if we were trying to go from here to the middle of the city of Richmond. Now, if you're just going you know, across, across the road to those houses over there in Cedarly, we could walk. But if we were trying to go to Richmond to tell people about Jesus, you'd probably want to drive a car or ride something. Well, this is the time where they would ride a wheelbarrow like this, and somebody would push them there, and they would tell people about Jesus. Hudson Taylor was working so hard to tell G people about Jesus. Boys and girls, that's what we can do, even here. Your friends or people you know, we can tell them about Jesus. We can pray for missionaries who are telling people about Jesus, but we can do that ourselves. Of course, first we want to make sure that we know Jesus as our Savior, right? But if we do, if we know Jesus and we love him, and we can think, dear Lord, there are many people that don't know about Jesus. Help me to tell them about the Lord Jesus. And that's what Hudson Taylor and his friend did. He carried a lot of tracks with him. You know what tracks are, right? We have a bunch of them in our hallway. If you look on the right, there's a rack with a bunch of different kinds of tracks. They all tell people about Jesus. And you could say, would you like to read this? Would you like to come and visit our church? We can tell you about Jesus or anything like that to help them know how they can have everlasting life. One time, Hudson Taylor and his friend went to a, uh, one of the towns where they had to walk to it. And they were walking and getting near the town. And one of the men near in that town, who was a kind man, he said, don't go to that town. It's Tung Chow. They are very wicked people in there. Don't go there. They will hurt you. But Hudson thought, well, these people need to know about the Lord Jesus too. He and his friend both thought that. So they thought, we're going to go and tell them about the Lord Jesus. Well, sure enough, it happened. And you know, Hudson Taylor had gotten experience with this kind of thing in London, remember? Remember we learned yesterday, sometimes people, when he would be telling them about Jesus, they would uh, hit him or throw things at him and tear up his tracks. So he was a little bit used to that. That's another thing he got used to before he became a missionary. Well, here they were in this town of Tung Chow, and some of the soldiers which they were drunk. One of them was drunken. If you drink alcohol, sometimes you can get to be a very mean person, even though you're not always mean. But that's what they did. They beat them up, and they were just, and they were afraid, are they going to kill them? And somebody said, take him to the Mandarin. The Mandarin was like the town leader. 
And so they say, took Hudson and his friend to the Mandarin, and the Mandarin said, what's going on here? And so they explained, and the Mandarin said, let's get these men some tea. He fed them tea, and he said, why are you in this town? And they said, we want to tell your people about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And they gave the Mandarin a New Testament. And surprisingly, the Mandarin took it, and he looked at it, and he said, you may, t you may tell the people in our town about this news, this good news. And he even sent soldiers to go with them to protect them. So you see how God protected Hudson Taylor again. And then, as Hudson kept learning and teaching people about Jesus, one day he was sitting on the houseboat. Here's the picture of the houseboat again. He was sitting on his houseboat, and he was eating his meal of rice and duck eggs. And his helper said, Mr. Taylor, I see that you eat what we eat. You speak our language. But why don't you look like us? Why don't you dress like us? And Hudson thought, hmm, well, that's an idea. You know what he did? He got a Chinese haircut. He got his hair dyed black. He got a long braid on the back of his hair called a Q. He started wearing the Chinese clothes instead of his English suit. He had breeches or pants. He had a loose-fitting shirt. He had uh, rough socks. He had tight shoes. He had a silk um, shirt over top. He looked just like a Chinese person. And now people weren't thinking, who's this? And they listened to him. And so that's something that China, uh, Hudson Taylor did. Then Hudson, as he was talking to people about the Lord, they said, in this town, it was an island called Sun Ming. In Sun Ming, they said, we are going to find you a house that you can rent and live in. It will be your very own house that you can live in. And Hudson Taylor was so happy. He lived in that house. And in the daytime, he would treat the sick people because, remember, he had medicine with, them, with him to help them. And a lot of the Chinese people were poor or sick. He would treat them. And in the evening, he would tell his neighbors all about the Lord Jesus. And do you know what? The story tells us that two people in that town got saved. One was named Chang. He was a blacksmith. And the other was Sung. He was a businessman. They believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hudson Taylor was so happy. But for six weeks he lived there, and it was wonderful. He just loved it. But then he got word, you must leave our town and go somewhere else. Hudson Taylor had a heavy heart, and his Chinese friends had a head heavy hearts as well. They liked Hudson living there, and now he had to leave. But there was no getting around it. He was not allowed to stay. The government told him to leave. The reason is there were some other doctors and pharmacists in the town that were jealous of Hudson Taylor. He had lots of medicine that was good, and a lot of people were following him and learning about Jesus, and they did not like it. Wow. So let me show you our last picture of today. This is Hudson Taylor sadly going out of his place where he had lived, that God had provided. Now he had nowhere to go. How was God going to take care of him now? He locked the door. And tomorrow we'll find out what will happen to Hudson Taylor. Do you think God will just neglect him and abandon him? God won't. He won't. So tomorrow you come back, and we will learn some more. All right, so now what time is it? Yes, and I see Mr. Philip back there. So you all, you listen to Mr. Philip. He'll tell you what to do.